Okay, for this first problem, we're looking at a roller coaster's velocity. A roller coaster velocity at the top of a hill is 10 meters per second. Two seconds later, it reaches the bottom of the hill with a velocity of 26 meters per second. What was the acceleration of the coaster? Okay, first, to solve this problem, we are going to need to know what our equation is. We have it written right here. Now we plug in the variables uh, that go into this equation and figure out what we know and what we don't know just from reading this problem. So we have a roller coaster's velocity at the top of a hill is 10 meters per second. That is its initial velocity. So we would write 10 meters per second there. <clears throat> Two seconds later, it reaches the bottom of the hill. So the time of duration uh, for this change in velocity that we're going to find is two seconds. Uh, reaches the bottom of the hill with a velocity of 26 meters per second. So its final velocity was 26 meters per second. So it looks like it's going to be speeding up. What is the, coast, uh, the acceleration of the coaster? So we'll just leave that as A for now until we figure out what it is. Now we know everything that we need to know in order to solve for our acceleration. Let's go ahead and plug this into the equation here. So we would write A for A. VF is 26 meters. And VI was 10. Time was 2 seconds. So put 2 right there. All right. This is going old school here. We're going to PEMDAS this. If you guys can do this, I'm going to say there's nothing in this world you can't do. If you can follow this to an extreme level of competence, you are an exceptionally smart person, especially when it comes to math and everything else. So start off those in parentheses. We'll go 26 minus 10. 26 minus 10 is 16. And then 16 divided by 2 is 8. And that would be meters per second squared is what this roller coaster's acceleration is. Step one, do it in parentheses. Step two, there's no exponents, there's no multiplication going on. We do have some division though, so we'll go 16 divided by two. That gets us our eight meters per second squared. Meters per second squared is just the units for acceleration because it's changing in meters per second per second. Let's go ahead and look at another problem. All right, for this one, we got a boy who throws a ball straight up into the air. It reaches the highest point of its flight after four seconds. How fast was the ball going when it left the boy's hand? Now, this one kind of requires a little bit of you know, prior knowledge uh, concerning objects in motion, uh, in flight, I guess, uh, when, the, when the, oh, there's only one force acting on it, which is gravity. So if a boy throws a ball straight up into the air, it reaches its highest point of its flight after four seconds. So the time we know is four seconds. When an object reaches its highest point, and I'll draw this really quick, so here's the person right here. They're throwing the ball, it's starting their hand, and it goes up to here. When it reaches that point, it is no longer moving. Let's, we'll redraw this here, and we'll pretend that this person threw it exactly straight up so it goes straight back down. When it reaches its highest point, it's no longer moving. If I was to snap my fingers, turn off gravity, it's uh, velocity will be zero, so it would effectively stay right there in place. So this would be its final velocity after the kid threw it. It would be zero meters per second. Uh, how fast was the ball going when it left the boy's hand? That would be its initial velocity, so we want to know what VI is. And when an object is in flight, I guess is the word, uh, when, it's, when it's in a state of free fall, which is the case after this person throws it up there, uh, there is only one source of, one force acting on it, that's gravity, and gravity pulls on things with a 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, right, negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's pulling downwards versus upwards. This person threw it up, it's gonna have an acceleration and velocity that's pointed upwards, or velocity at least it's pointed upwards positive, but because it's going to go back down, it's going to slow down, it's got a negative acceleration. Let's go ahead and solve this really quick. So we're solving for VI. A is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know VF is zero. VI is VI. And the time is... Four seconds. 
Let me get rid of that unit there, clean it up a little bit. Okay, first thing we gotta do is multiply both sides by four. So we can't do anything with that VI there. And that comes out to, I believe it's 39.2, I think. Four times negative 9.8. Negative 39.2 is equal to zero minus VI. <clears throat> now, zero minus VI or, v, or anything being uh, having zero subtracted from it is uh, it's not going to change anything at all. So we're just going to scrap the zero. Negative 39.2 is equal to negative VI. And what this is a uh, negative uh, variable here is the same thing as negative one times a variable. So we're going to divide by negative one to both sides. And our initial velocity would be 39.2 meters per second. Okay, for this one, we have a child dropping a ball from a window. The ball strikes the ground in three seconds. What is the velocity of the ball the instant before it hits the ground? Okay, in this case, the initial velocity is going to be when the kid's holding the ball in his hand. So this velocity initially is going to be zero. Time it takes is three seconds. Kind of a decent height to drop a ball from. We want to know the, uh, the velocity of the ball the instant before it hits the ground. So that's going to be its final velocity. We're trying to figure out. And its acceleration, same thing as the last problem. This is a ball that is in free fall or in flight. Uh, the only force acting on it is going to be gravity, which pulls things down at about negative 9.8 meters per second squared. <clears throat> Maybe that would be positive in this case since it's going down. I'm not really sure, but we're just going to go with negative 9.8. Negative meaning it's going downwards. We'll call it, we'll, we'll just call it that. It's getting closer to the ground. All right, plug everything in. A is equal to negative 9.8. That will equal, let's, let's actually take a moment, write this up here. Final velocity we don't know. Subtract from zero and it takes three seconds. Okay, first thing we gotta do is multiply both sides by three. Three times that I believe is 20, Nine? No. Yes, 29.4, negative 29.4. <clears throat> that equals VF minus zero. And uh, we would just add zero, I guess, but since adding zero doesn't do anything, uh, we just get rid of that zero because zero doesn't do anything to this at all. VF would equal negative 29.4. Let's take a look at just one more problem. All right, for this one, how long will it take a car to go from a complete stop to 44 kilometers per hour if they are accelerating at five kilometers per hour squared? That is an odd use of uh, units for acceleration. So let's put in the acceleration here. We know that five kilometers per hour squared. Uh, how long will it take a car to go from a complete stop? So that's initial velocity of zero meters per second uh, to 44 kilometers per hour. That would be the final velocity. And this is kilometers per hour, my bad. Okay, time, we, that's what we wanna know. So we're trying to find T. Plug all this stuff in. So acceleration is five, 44 is the final velocity, zero is the initial. Okay, 44 minus zero gets you just 44. So now we just got 44 over T. 
Okay, now we could just go uh, divide both sides by five and that would end up get, getting us T, but I really like to show T getting by itself and how it got there. So we're gonna multiply both sides by T because it's hard to work with T when it's underneath a fraction like this, underneath a divisor like this. So times T times T, that'll get rid of that, put it over here. So now 5T is equal to 44 and then we'll just divide by five. And then this is how we get to the divide by five. 44, that's gonna be nine point something, I think. Eight point something, 8.8 .8. meter, oh, just seconds. That is a slow moving vehicle. <clears throat> That's all for today's video. We will have more videos coming out concerning what acceleration, velocity, uh, displacement over time graphs look like and how, uh, how you can kind of diagram, like ticker tape diagrams and vector diagrams, how you can use those to show motion. And if you were trying to read those types of graphs and diagrams, you would know what an object is doing. We'll have more videos like that in the future. I'll recommend watching those. And uh, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It all really helps. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Take care.